This video contains information on how to set up your Alex account for this Math 1A pre-calculus course. Alex stands for Assessment and Learning in Knowledge Spaces and is an online adaptive learning program that uses artificial intelligence to precisely identify and deliver personalized instruction on the exact topics each student is most ready to learn. To begin the Alex program, open up a web browser on a computer connected to the internet and go to this URL up here, www.alex.com. And then click on this link here on the upper left that says Sign Up Now. And since you will be using Alex with a class, we'll be focusing on this left-hand box here. Now your professor should have provided you with a course code, which you'll enter in here. And then click Continue. And now it will ask you to confirm your enrollment information. Yes, I'm in Math 1A Pre-Calculus with Professor Anteater at UCI. And now click on Continue. Now you're asked for your 20-digit access code, which you can either purchase from the bookstore or Alex directly by clicking on this link here that says Purchase an Access Code Online. So let's enter in our access code and click Continue. Now enter in your student information here. Peter, Anteater, and now enter in your email, panteater at uci.edu. And enter in a password that's six letters or digits minimum. Confirm that password. And then enter in your student ID. And then scroll down and read the Alex user agreement. Once you've read it, click on this box here that you have read and that you agree to the terms of the Alex user agreement, and then click Continue. And now it will give you your login, which you will use with the password you entered in the last step every time you log into Alex. Now click Continue. And Alex will look for a plugin on your computer and install it if needed. Here we didn't need to install it, but if the plugin is installed, you may need to restart your browser and then log back in with your login and password. Now you will learn some of the basic Alex answer input tools, known collectively as the answer editor. So using your keyboard, type in the number 14. And now it's asking you to hit this clear button which notice cleared that number 14. And now it's asking you to click on undo, which notice undid the last action of clearing that number 14. All right, so let's click on next to look at the next exercise. Let's learn how to enter in a fraction. So let's click this fraction button here. And now in the numerator, we'll type in two. And then we'll click in the denominator and type in 3. And we've entered in the fraction 2 thirds. So let's click on Next to go to the next exercise. Now let's learn how to enter an expression with parentheses. So let's click here. And with our keyboard, we'll enter in a left parenthesis, x plus 4, right parenthesis, and then click on the exponent button and type in 2. And then click over here in this blue circle to get out of the exponent. And then using the keyboard, type in plus 7. 
Click on this blue circle and hold until you get to this blue circle. Release. Now click this fraction button, which put everything that we had highlighted in the numerator of this fraction. And now type in 3 into the denominator. And we've entered in this expression. So let's click on next to go to the next exercise. Now let's learn how to plot a point and draw a line. Let's click on the pencil button, come over here and plot this point, then click on the ruler button, move your mouse into this blue circle, click here. Now move your mouse into this blue circle, click here. And now grab the pencil icon again and move your mouse over here. Draw to here, draw to here, and we've drawn a line. So let's click on next. And now we'll look at the Alex calculator. But it should be pointed out that not every question in Alex has a calculator active. It is only active when Alex feels it is needed for a certain problem. If it is not active in Alex, do not use your own calculator. So let's click on OK, and then we'll come up here and click on the calculator. We'll click on this blue box. We'll type in the number 31, and then we'll click on the Addition button. And then we'll type here 9, and then click on the Equals button, and so on. So it functions just like a normal calculator. All right, so let's click on Next. Now, at any time during assessment or learning, if you ever need help, there's this Help button up here on the top that you can click. And over here on the right, there is a link to an Alex user guide, which you can always read. And then over here on the left, we see this link, All Topics for Precalculus. So let's click on that, and this will give you an extensive list of topics or tools that you might encounter in the Answer Editor. And when you are done reading what you were looking for, you can click on Done down here. And also, if there's a new tool and a question that you've never seen before, there is this Quick Help that you can click on to learn how to use that tool. Let's click on Next. Now that you are registered and have learned about the Answer Editor, you will be given what is called your initial assessment. This is basically the heart and soul of Alex, as it will determine your starting point or baseline for your learning, which is called your knowledge state. Now during this initial assessment, you will be asked between 25 to 35 questions, and the powerful assessment engine within Alex will be capable of pinpointing your knowledge state very precisely. That is, the system will know what you know, what you don't know, and what you are capable of learning next. And what you don't know, and what someone else in the class doesn't know, will be different. But that's okay. Alex will fill your learning gaps when you get into the learning mode after your initial assessment. Now, during this initial assessment, you should have a pencil and paper handy. Don't be anxious or nervous, just do your best. Okay, so let's get started. So the first question here, you're asked to graph the line x plus 2y is equal to negative 2. Well, when x is equal to 0, for example, this equation simplifies to 2y is equal to negative 2 or y is equal to negative 1, which means the point 0, negative 1 lies on our graph. So let's come over here and grab our pencil, go to x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 1, and draw a point. And now looking back up here, when y is equal to 0, x is equal to negative 2, which means the point negative 2, 0 also lies on our graph. Now we could take our pen tool and plot the point x equal negative 2, y equals 0, but let's look at this other feature over here. 
if we click here, then we can actually enter in the ordered pair here. So x equals negative 2, y equals 0, and click on plot point, and it will plot it for us. All right, now let's grab our ruler, click on one point, click on the other, grab our pencil again, and draw our line. And then click on Next to submit your answer. Now notice we were not told whether we were right or wrong here. And you will not be told until you get a report at the end of the assessment. All right, let's scroll down here. Now notice this button next to the word next. It says, I don't know. Now if at any time during your initial assessment, you honestly do not know how to answer a certain question, or you've never learned that topic before, then click on I don't know. But whatever you do, do not just click it because you want to get through the test quicker. This will make for many, many, many more hours of unnecessary work throughout the quarter. Just do your best and try to answer any question that you think you have a shot at answering correctly. So let's say Peter really doesn't know how to answer this question. He can click on I don't know. All right, in this problem, we do know how to answer. This is an application of the Pythagorean theorem. So the hypotenuse squared or x squared is equal to the sum of the squares of these two sides. So x then would be the square root of 144 plus 100 or the square root of 244. Now notice the instructions here. They say to round to your nearest tenth. And then notice, the calculator is active. So let's use it. So we come over here. And we type in the square root of 244. Click on the Equals button. And so rounding this to the nearest tenth, we would get 15.6. So let's enter that answer here. We can close our calculator, so we'll enter in 15.6, and click on Next. All right, and for this one, by properties of rational exponents, we could take the fifth root of 32 first, which is 2, and then cube that answer, which is 8. So our answer here would be 8. Now, for demonstration purposes, let's just skip to the end of the assessment. All right, so this is at the end of the assessment. The function f is defined by f of x is equal to x squared minus x, and they want Peter to find f of 2x. So we plug 2x in wherever we see an x. So 2x squared is 4 x press the exponent button, squared, and then minus, plugging in 2x again, we have 2x, and then we click on Next. And the assessment is complete. So let's click on Next to see what Alex learned about Peter Anteater. Now this is what is called Peter Anteater's Alex Pie. In Alex, a student's knowledge is represented by these multicolored pie charts. And this pie chart is divided into four slices here. Up here, the red slice contains topics in conic sections. This purple slice contains topics in polynomials and rational functions. The yellow slice contains topics in functions and graphs. And the blue slice contains topics in algebra and geometry review. And the 113 topics that Alex determined Peter knows are split up into these four slices. All right, let's hit continue here. The dark part of each slice corresponds to the topics Peter knows. And the lighter part corresponds to the topics Peter will learn. His goal is to fill his pie. That is, to make each slice dark. So this is a powerful motivator because he wants to fill the entire pie by making all the slices dark. All right, let's click on Continue here. 
Now Peter's goal here is to learn all the topics in this course. And the Alex Pie is very user friendly when it comes to navigating through the topics within each slice. So let's say Peter wants to work over here in Algebra and Geometry Review. He simply hovers over that slice and Alex gives him access to all the topics he is ready to learn. So let's say Peter wants to work on rational and irrational numbers. He would click here. And Alex will give him a problem on classifying rational and irrational numbers. So this first number, the square root of 19, is irrational. The square root of 9, that square root might throw him, but the square root of 9 is 3. And 3 is a rational number. Negative 17 over 2 is rational. This repeating decimal is rational. This number is irrational. And then Peter clicks on Next to submit his answer. And look up here. It tells him right away that he got that question right. And if he answers it correctly without help one more time, Alex will add this problem to his pie. So he clicks on Practice down here. And again, he's going to classify these numbers. This is irrational. This is rational. This is rational. This is irrational. And this is rational. And then Peter would submit his answer by clicking Next. And Alex tells him that he has learned this topic. So scrolling down here, there's this button, More Practice, if he feels like he wants to practice more. Or he can click on Done to return to his pie. So let's click on Done here. And notice that this number of topics increased from 113 to 114 because that topic was just added to his pie. Now you might be wondering what these dotted white lines are here in the pie. These signify or encompass the topics that are in the current intermediate objective. In this Math 1A class, there are two intermediate objectives. And basically what that means is that the course content is split into two sections. The first part of the course, which corresponds to topics that will be on your midterm, and then the second part of the course. And both of the objectives together correspond to the topics you'll see on your final. And notice down here, Alex tells you how many topics still need to be mastered before the due date of the objective. So let's go back to our pie and choose a different topic. Let's say Peter wants to work on polynomials and rational functions. Again, he hovers over that slice and Alex gives him access to the topics he's ready to learn. So let's say he wants to work on discriminant of a quadratic equation. He'd click here. And let's say Peter really doesn't know what the discriminant is. He can click on this explanation button here. And Alex has a full detailed explanation on what a discriminant is, as well as applying it to the current problem. It also has additional resources over here, PDFs to the book, video lectures, etc. And let's say Peter doesn't know what a quadratic equation is, for example. He can click on this link here, and it will take him to a dictionary page, which gives him information on a quadratic equation. And after he's done reading and he gets the information that he's looking for, he can close the window, which brings him back to the problem at hand. So let's say Peter still doesn't understand or he doesn't feel like working on this problem anymore. At any time, he can come up here to my pie and choose a different topic. So maybe he'll come over to this slice, functions and graphs. Or maybe he wants to go back to the Algebra and Geometry Review, and so on. Now Alex will periodically reassess you to confirm your retention of the topics you have studied. These are called automatic or progress assessments, and are given based on your rate of progress in Alex and the amount of time spent working in Alex. Now it should be pointed out, though, that although you demonstrate mastery of a certain topic in your learning, Alex may expect you to demonstrate continued mastery of that topic in subsequent assessments, and if you seem to need review, 
Alex will subtract that topic and possibly other prerequisite topics from your pie, making them available for selection again in learning. Therefore, always try to do your best on assessments. All right, there are a few more things to point out here. If you look up here on the top right, there's a button that says Report. And if we click here, it gives you a full report on your knowledge. It shows your pie, what topics you can do, what topics you are ready to learn, as well as your history, your assessment performance, the percent of the current objective that you have satisfied. And then if you go back up to the top here, there's a tab that says time and topic. And this gives you the time that is spent in Alex, as well as the topics that are attempted and the topics that are mastered. And when you're done looking at the report, you can click on done here. And also up here, there's a tab that says calendar. And if you click here, it will give you the dates of your midterms, links to them, the due dates of your objectives, your final exam, and so on. And at any time, if you want to contact Alex Customer Support, you can click on your inbox up here. And you can compose a message. And when you click on this two icon, you can choose to send Alex Customer Support and your professor an email. And Alex has a lot of cool features like this. And once you start browsing around the website, you'll familiarize yourself with them. And for all other information on this course, please see the course website. It has full details on all aspects of the course. Have fun learning.